How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for obsgein slash heme for step one and step two. A nearly identical question shows up on one of the 2CK OBGYN forms, all right? So before we started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 34-year-old woman. She's at eight weeks gestation, and she has an MCV of 71 and a hemoglobin of 9.8 grams per deciliter. MCV should be 80 to 100. Hemoglobin should be in menstruating women, 12 to 17.5. She's pregnant. It should still be 12 or greater. She currently takes a multivitamin. She is prescribed an oral supplement. Oral supplement. What the fuck am I saying? She is prescribed an iron supplement. Three weeks later, laboratory studies show an MCV of 72 and a hemoglobin of 10, which the following is most likely to be seen in this patient. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, acanthocytes, wrong fucking answer. You will see across resources acanthocytes equating to A, beta lipoproteinemia, which are spur cells, the spiky RBCs, truthfully, extremely low yield A beta lipoproteinemia. What you need to know acanthocytes are associated with is liver failure particularly in heat stroke. USMLA is obsessed with that. For example, they give you an old lady. She's found in her house in the summer. She has a body temperature of 106 Fahrenheit. Blood smear shows acanthocytes. Answer is liver failure. Answer is heat stroke. Okay. And student says, why are there acanthocytes? Well, heat stroke is end organ damage due to hyperthermia. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased serum ferritin. Wrong answer. This is not iron deficiency anemia as I will talk about, okay? So in this question, she has a microcytic anemia to start at her antenatal screen. She has taken an iron supplement for three weeks and she still has a microcytic anemia. She doesn't have iron deficiency anemia, okay? Her serum, iron, and ferritin are going to be in the normal range. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased red cell distribution with wrong answer. You need to know that this is seen in IDA, iron deficiency anemia, almost always. Okay, so your factoid for USMLA is if you if you get a question, big fucking paragraph, all these lab values, and you see red cell distribution with, and it's normal or decreased, instantaneously you say, okay, cool, not iron deficiency anemia. Okay, very important. Choice D, schistocytes, wrong answer, obviously lengthy discussion. In pregnancy, this could be seen in HELP syndrome. Okay, so hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, low platelet count. Uh, as well as uh, HUS, TTP, DIC, mechanical valves, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, target cells, correct answer. This patient has thalassemia. Whether it's alpha or beta, we don't know yet. But what you need to know, okay? This is very fucking important and high yield. Thalassemia is the answer. If a patient, any patient, doesn't have to be pregnant, okay? Any patient has a microcytic anemia that is refractory slash non-responsive to iron supplementation, okay? So this patient has a microcytic anemia, three weeks later on iron, still has it. Next best step in management on family medicine forms in particular is check serum iron and ferritin, okay? If they don't have that listed, you're going to choose hemoglobin electrophoresis. That's the next best step in diagnosis for thalassemia, okay? So they'll often give you a question like this. They might say the iron and ferritin is part of the values, and then you check the lab values in the question. You can see that they're normal. And then, okay, so they are normal in thalassemia, iron and ferritin. If you have a microcytic anemia and iron and ferritin are low, that's obviously iron deficiency anemia. If you have a microcytic anemia and iron and ferritin are normal, that's going to be thalassemia. Then you do your hemoglobin electrophoresis. For beta thalassemia, you're going to see increased HbA2 and HbF. For alpha thalassemia, for one or two mutations, you're going to have a normal hemoglobin electrophoresis. Okay, so target cell is very buzzy. You can't rely on that as a crutch, okay, in the question stem in terms of being able to diagnose thalassemia. You have to understand, okay, your high yield uh, take home point here is if you get a question, and it's a microcytic anemia with normal iron and ferritin, or you have a microcytic anemia that is refractory slash non-responsive to iron supplementation, answer equals thalassemia. We don't know whether it's alpha or beta yet, and then you're going to do the hemoglobin electrophoresis, as I just fucking said. You know the deal, Nick, to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel.
and I appreciate your time. That's it.